Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. I'm your host and it is my special honor to welcome our special guest, Hannah Fearman. Hannah, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being here. First of all, how did you enjoy that convention last weekend? Okay, so that was my first um, my first real con. And uh, I, I mean, I went to Comic-Con like maybe 12 years ago um but i was there as a as an artist as a uh-huh. painter and i was just dropping off art so technically i guess that was my first con but this was my first con like as an as an actor and my first horror con especially and um i kind of always knew it was going to be amazing but i didn't realize how much fun i was going to have like oh my gosh i'm i'm addicted like I, i'm coming i'm coming back to all cons any con, I don't care. I'm coming. Like I had so much fun. And a full disclosure to our viewers, me and Hannah <laughs> and my producer, we ended up in the show office Saturday morning together. We ended up coming in, checking in at the exact same time. And Hannah was the first person that we actually met at the convention. And it was like off to the races then. Uh, I have not been to a convention since the mid 90s. And then, of course, I started this show over a year ago and I got to meet all these great people doing interviews. But this last weekend was the first chance, you know, since COVID that we I got a chance to go out and actually meet people, you know, not virtually through a camera. And it was an absolutely amazing experience. So I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. The energy in there was great. Uh, And I was amazed at how many people showed up. It was a pretty big crowd. And everybody was really, you know, just giving hugs. And it just felt good to be in a place where, you know, normalcy was, you could feel it was coming back again. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it's so funny because like, nobody there was normal (laughs) (laughs) but it felt so good it felt so good and it was just like people were like skipping around and cosplaying and just like hugging each other and you know we could see each other's faces and um also like so the reason i got into this con uh or or conventions at all is because of my buddies damien and felissa and um we're I'm directing their next movie and um they're just always they're they're always doing these cons and it looks like it was so much fun and I was just like you know on our last meeting I was just like well you know North Carolina I could drive there I want to do it and they're like yeah come on and so I was like this last minute guest and I didn't know what to expect and I was I didn't know what to wear and um I drove up with my other actor buddy because I thought she'd have a blast too and we just needed to get out of the city. And um, man, I'm just like, oh, this is this is like this is like a community. These people yeah. this is like a lifestyle mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, and I want to be a part of it. Um, I'm I'm like full in. I'm just like it's like it's like it's like Burning Man. It's like I'm a burner, <laughs> but it's like not Burning Man. What what do we call our? Is there a word for it? Like a horror? Or what, uh, what would you call it? It depends on who you ask. It, Some people call is there a us, name? you know horror geeks, horror nerds, or you know fanatics. Uh, I don't think there's a specific term for it. But so you're directing a movie with Damien Maffey and Felissa Rose. It's yeah, it's Maffei and um yeah, they're they're both acting in it and um they're both producing it and I'm directing it. Yeah. Our next movie. That's it's aw- called The Events Surrounding a Peeping Tom. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh I did not know that till you just told me. Um speaking of <laughs> of Felissa, uh you know, we all know okay. Felissa from You broke up. I can't oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Say that again. Yeah, I, it uh, might be my Wi-Fi, and I apologize for that. No, because... it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I was talking about Felissa and uh, how hugely popular she is. Uh, of course, we mm-hmm. all know her from back in that you know huge uh, sleepaway camp, which is a cult classic. But I was yeah. blown away on just how much she is just a this ball of charming delightful fun energy i mean she's just a blast 
She's a blast. And, but I also want to say that like, she's also incredibly intelligent oh, yeah. and, um, and organized and, um, just, I mean, she's kind she's kind of everything. Like I, I'm so impressed with her and she's been an amazing producer and she's also a really talented actor. Like, oh, yeah. you know, people, I, I feel like people focus on her bubbly, bubbly, you know, presence a lot more, but there's so much more to her. You know? Yeah, I remember we. Yeah. Uh, uh, she was standing next to a lady, and I'm like, "Is this your assistant?" She's like, "Oh, that's my manager." Uh, and she was in the middle of signing autographs, so I'm like, "Okay, you go. You know, continue signing your autographs. I'll talk to your manager." So I go and I talk to her manager, and I'm like, "I hear Felissa is producing a movie," and her manager goes to me, "She's always producing a movie." Yeah. She is producing like ten thousand movies all at once, like. Okay, it's hard enough to produce one movie. Like, I'm not a multitasker. And she she produces multiple movies, multiple, you know, at, at every at every step. Like she's just always doing all of these these fascinating things and um it's just so impressive. It, it just is. I mean, it just straight up is. Yeah. I'm really impressed with the woman. And and I really appreciate like that she's she's put me in her last two features. I was the lead in one, and I was um, one of the leads in the in the in the last one, and that was in September and December. And then she invites me into her world, in her con world, you know. And it's just like she's just embraced me. Yeah. And and oh my gosh, you know, it's just like I'm just so grateful for the support, you know, and and for the, um, you know, she just believes in me and. It's just, oh, it's just such a great feeling, yeah. especially after you've been, you know, in lockdown and you, you you maybe question your life choices and you're just like, am I doing the right thing? Maybe I should have, you know, maybe I should have been in, in the finance world or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. And, and then you find somebody who just like straight up believes in you. And then just she saw my short film and wanted. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? You there? Well, I think we froze. Let me they, see. Yep. they gave me money and asked me to direct that is a so, segment. A bright and direct. That what? is that is so cool. Now you yeah, were also we're, Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't. Okay, now I can. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. No, it's so okay. I, it's okay. No problem. It, it's probably my Wi-Fi. There is a storm. Yeah, outside, I know. So. Yeah, I got knocked I out by a storm earlier as well. Uh, you were part of that That's panel annoying. that all uh, the, you know, the women of horror panel this last weekend. Uh, what was that like? With that? I'm just going to sit here. I'm, I'm just going to sit here until you come back because you're frozen. I'm frozen. All right, hold on. That's not acceptable. Hold on. Hold on. Hold oh, on. Oh dear. Okay, I think you're back. I'm back. I can hear okay. background noise. Can you see me? Nope. Fro you're frozen. Yep. Okay. Can you see me now? Fuck. You're frozen again. Ugh. I can see you, but you're frozen. Oh. Uh, can you hear me? Here. Let's reattempt this. Hold on. I will call you back. One second. All right, guys, this is just part of uh, the live part here. One second. Let me get her back. All right. All right. Let's try this back, again. Though. Okay. All right. Try that again? Yes. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I can, I can hear you. I can hear you, and you're not frozen. Yay. Okay. Yay. Okay. Annoying. Sorry. All right. no. Okay. This conversation is way too fun. Now, you were part of that old, that woman of horror panel. Uh, yeah, this past weekend. how great was, was that? You, you missed it. You didn't see it, did you? Well, I was trying to work out uh, uploading clips. You see, this has been my first convention since I started the show. Mm -hmm. And it was a learning curve for me, okay? I, att okay. I attended as press, my first convention attending as press. And I was trying to see, I, you know, I came in, well, I'm going to do some live streaming but then I was trying to upload and I'm like, this is not working. So ultimately um, I decided, you know what? I'm going to record my footage. And then after the convention is over, I will then, you know, share it with my audience. So I did, uh, 
my executive producer who was there recorded it and I came in towards the end when you guys were doing the photo shoot and okay. uh, I saw the recording part. Uh, Bay Ling, man, she, she's a blast. Oh my uh, gosh. I'm, <laughs> I'm in love with that woman. <laughs> she's, she is so cool. She, like we, we exchange phone numbers. We're hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. We're hanging out. Like that chick is too much fun. She is such yeah. a trip. Uh, and it was you, Bay Ling, uh, and Felissa on that panel. Uh, and Naomi. And Naomi. Oh my God, Naomi. Naomi, I had interviewed Naomi. So Naomi was the first person that I actually got to meet in person. I've done over 60 interviews, but yeah. because of COVID, she was my first guest that I actually got to meet in person last weekend. Oh, nice. So the four of you together were a blast, and it was it was great. I got to see the tape part because my brother uh, uh, recorded it, and then I got in there for the photo shoot, and you guys just seemed to have a lot of fun. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, on that panel. I mean, how could you not have fun with those ladies? Like, they're so fun. They're so positive and, um, and clever. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. I was just like... I was just kind of overwhelmed. I was kind of like, oh, I don't think, I don't think the, that I'm your peer, guys. Like, <laughs> no. You guys are way cooler than I am. <laughs> but okay, you know, I'll just, I'll just stay here and act like I'm supposed to be here, whatever. It's no, all good. no, you belong with them every bit as all of the rest of them. Now, let's get to your movies. Now, you started yeah, okay. out uh, in like the late 2000s. You were in a couple of shorts uh, and then you were, jumped into movies let's talk about what how did you first actually of all, that's not accurate i've i've been making i i did my first feature film in as a supporting role in 1998 oh. i think yeah and um i had i had done multiple short films uh before that as well but you know i mean i mean that I haven't even seen a lot of them, and I, I know that the, that feature got made, but I still haven't seen it. So, yeah. So, IMDb isn't isn't entirely uh, oh, entirely accurate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but carry on. I'm listening. Uh, VHS is where yeah. I first saw you. Okay. Yeah. I believe uh, you're you're in the first movie. That segment uh, that we saw that was the first segment in the movie, wasn't it? Was it the first or the second segment? Yeah. In so it was the first segment, but the wraparound started the movie. So the wraparound tied the anthology together. So it wasn't the first thing you saw, but it was the first segment. Yes. Exactly. When they got in and started putting the tapes in and watching it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, your mm -hmm. segment, uh, well, to put it, I guess there's no other way to put it, but you played one creepy ass girl <laughs> in that movie. Uh now, this was going back, what, VHS is 2012, so mm -hmm. almost 10 years ago. Uh, going into that film, how did you get the role? Uh, what did you think of the script? The movie was produced, I believe, by, like, Bloody Disgusting TV. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did that all come about for you? So um, I had already been uh, a working actor in Atlanta, and I decided that it was... Um, it wasn't big enough and I wanted to come back and produce movies within Atlanta because I felt like they were, I felt like there's a wealth of talent there that wasn't being utilized. But I, I moved to New York for five years and had a, a relatively successful career up there doing television. And, um, I moved back to Atlanta and I had always been friends with these indie people that I've been making movies with since the nineties. And, um, David was one of them. David Bruckner was one of them. And mm -hmm. um, he was basically like, hey, Hannah, you want to you want to play this role I wrote for you, basically. And um, so, you know, it was it was gratuitous. And there's I mean, I'm it that they were going for gratuity. I'm not yeah. criticizing the movie that, that it, it was pure filth. Um, but that's what they were going for. And they did it well. And it was awesome, you know, and it was provocative and and um everything David wanted it to be uncomfortable, you know, um, self-evaluating. And, uh, so he comes to me and he, we're, we're friends, um, already because the, the community is very small with indie, indie filmmaking, um, or at least it was back then. And, uh, 
And he's like, hey, you want to play Naked Demon? And I was just like, do I? I don't know. I want. I, I knew I wanted to work with him because I think he's brilliant, and he is. Um, but then he's like, he just gets into the story of it and just like is so excited, and it was just so like infectious, and it just sucked me in, and I was just like, you know what? Yeah. I might as well hit the ground running. I just moved back to Atlanta from New York and I knew I wanted to work with him and I knew, you know, I, I wanted to work immediately so that I would continue working because as soon as you, as soon as people see your work and, 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 you know, see that you're working, they want to work with you and, and yeah. get the ball rolling. And it was just like, you know, this little indie that I didn't think was going to go anywhere. Nobody did. And, um, but I was like, oh, okay, you know, I trust you as a director. I trust you as a storyteller. Yeah, there's a lot of nudity. Um, but I had already done nudity um, for for this uh, television show. And so I was just like, well, you know, I've already done that. It's not so bad. And um, and I, I believe in the story. And I think this character could be really, really interesting and provocative and, and, and strange and wonderful. And um, so... Yeah, so I told him yeah, and uh, and I thought maybe maybe the directors, the other directors of the other segments might see this thing, but I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. So you and, guys, um, oh sorry, go on. Yeah, no, what was your question? I was going to ask. So you guys were all just really surprised on how much, on how popular this film became. You were oh not expecting it. We were not expecting it. I mean, like my picture was in the Rolling Stone. Mm-hmm. Like they they like ripped ripped off a picture of me and put it in playboy i was just like can you legally do that 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 seems like illegal i don't think they can (laughs) yeah well they can they they can't but evidently if you take them to court it's just press it's just more press for them so it's like just don't bother if you're in just leave it alone um and that was you know that was a little weird and i just got so much attention and it was just it was just so overwhelming i didn't know what to do it was it was a fascinating process. Um, so, so would I, you call VHS like a like a you know your big a break into the next level in your career? Absolutely, and um, the horror community really embraced me after that because it was good. It was a really well done segment, um, and you know, misunderstood monster. It, it was just I, people just really connected to that character, and it was fun be, because I developed it with David. So we were grassroots up. He was just like, "How do you want to play this?" And I was like, "Well, I want her to walk like this." And they had these contact lenses for me, and I was just like, "I don't need them. My eyes are freaky enough without them. It's fine." And um, yeah, just it—it it was just making art. It was just making art with my buddies. That was what it was. That's what it was, and it turned out to be a big hit. And it did, and it did, and I just got so much attention, especially our our segment was like the face of the entire thing. And then there was another VHS, you know, two, three, I think they're about to make a fourth one. And every time it's revived, I get this influx of attention again, and, and it's just like people want to cast me and things, and, and they're watching it for the first time. Maybe they, you know, maybe they weren't old enough to watch it in the first place. Exactly. And, um, 10 years, you know, it's, it's, that's a minute. And, um, so that basically, I had done horror film before films before, but that was the one that like really put me in the genre. And, and I, I'm so grateful for it. Like I, I love horror fans. I love horror filmmakers. I think they're some of the most creative artists in the industry. Mm-hmm. And I think that the fans are, um, are some of the most accepting in the industry. So if you want to try something new, you can do it in horror, but maybe not in other genres. You know, they're they're just like, no, I like my formula. But in horror, if you scare somebody, if you make them feel uncomfortable or whatever it is that you're trying to do, you they do reward you for it. Yeah, yeah they, they reward you for it. You don't have to have an A-lister in it. They're just like, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a chance. If it sucks, I'll definitely tell you. And they do. <laughs> But, um, yeah. So when you got into acting, would you say you were a horror fan in your, you know, in, when growing up or anything like that? Or like, as, you know, like you just described, you did VHS, became this huge hit, the horror community accepted you, and then you just fell in love with not only horror films, but the community, 
the genre itself and everything that comes with it. It was baby baby steps for me. Um, and now I I think that I'm okay. So I used to I, I used to not be able to watch movies. Actually, uh, horror movies. I I watched. You remember that? Um, what was it? Lights Out. You remember the two yes. minute short? Yeah. They made they made a feature of it. Yeah. So I guess about ten years ago. I don't know how long ago it was, but my buddy was like, "Hey, you want to watch this? Let's get our scare on. It's only two minutes. Come on, watch it." And I watched it, and I I slept with the lights on for two weeks. Wow. I, the two minutes, two weeks lights on. The I, I couldn't go to sleep with the lights off. Um, but I think I've become a little bit well. Okay, so the the, the genre is huge. There there's so many like subgenres within horror yeah. that you know you can't you can't say if you're a horror fan or not because there's definitely at least one horror movie that you're just like yeah that was a good movie like like Jaws. Everybody loves Jaws. Yeah. Y- you say you're not a horror fan. You love Jaws. You're a horror fan. You know, yeah, everything can um, dabble into even dramas, you know, action movies. They all dive a little bit into the horror realm. Absolutely, and it, and they'd be boring if they didn't. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I've I've definitely become a bit. Well, evidently, my friend Damien was telling me that, you know, he got me to watch this movie, and I was just like, I'm not going to tell you which one, and I was just like, the ending was so funny, and he's like. That shit wasn't supposed to be funny. What's wrong with you? You know? And I was just like, no, but rewatch it. It was hilarious. He's like, no, that's fucked up. It's fucked up. And you're fucked up. And I was just like, okay. Maybe I've maybe I've become hardened. Maybe just like working in the genre has made me just like Well, speaking of Damien, I mean I'm sorry you've seen Haunt. Did you see how his character looked in that movie? Oh my gosh. Every time he posts pictures of that, I'm just I it triggers me. I'm just like, take it down. I'm so upset. Take it down. I hate that shit. He was it's, he was a scary looking dude. He was terrifying. It's so upsetting, and he's got such a beautiful face. Why would why would you cover up that face? I know when I you would. when you meet him, it was funny meeting him. And on the table, he had his picture of the devil in you know as in in haunt. And you're like, is this really you? You know, they did <laughs> such an amazing job with that makeup. Now you have your first writing credit coming out, uh, movie yeah. called Dead by Midnight. Uh, what was that experience like? So, I mean, you've done directing, producing, acting. Now you're mm-hmm. writing. Uh, how was the yeah, writing I, experience? I've been around. I'm 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 an institution. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the writing experience was great. Actually, that was one of my favorite things. Um, so my my husband and I are getting a divorce. Not a lot of people know that it's it's happening. We're still friends. He's amazing, um, but he's an amazing writer. And uh, when they when they asked me to do Dead by Midnight two, um, I I was originally reaching out to see if they wanted a writer for you know for yeah. the movie because I, I wasn't even thinking that they want me to direct and write because you know I wasn't marketing myself as such and um, and they were like yeah actually we wanted you to write and direct one and I was just like oh oh okay so me and Josh my my husband we um, we just brainstormed immediately. And I was just like, okay, how about, okay, so I just played in a short, in a, in a pilot, I had just played a, uh, a, televan- a, a televangelist that um, was actually a demon who would, like, pretend to re- remove body parts and pretend to heal them and put them back. Like, this really, it was the coolest, funnest character ever because you got to be as nuts as you want with that. <laughs> it I sounds mean, nuts televangelists are, are nuts to begin with but like one that's supposed to be a demon yeah anyway yeah so i just got through playing that character and i was just like okay that was so much fun i want to i want to utilize a character that's similar i, I want to do televangelist stuff so i was just like hey guys like I, I immediately emailed the producers back and i was just like how about a little old lady gets revenge on a on a crooked televangelist and they're like yes do it and I was just like, sweet. So then me and me and Josh, we just like, I came up with the story and, and he wrote it and I helped. And it was, it was so much fun because, um, you know, you come up with these ideas and for, for stories and for, for movies and stuff and, and you know, they're never going to happen. So it's just like, well, why would I bother developing that? You know, yeah. why would I put my time and energy into that? It's kind of a bummer, even though it's a great idea. But this time it was just like, okay, we can do whatever we want, you know? And 
and we did and it was so much fun yeah so i can't wait for you guys to see that i don't think it i don't think it's out yet i think the distribution is just now yeah it's not it's not a it's not available for release yet now yeah acting producing directing now writing where going forward where where does your heart lie excuse me um where does my heart lie I want to I want to um, produce movies with all of my talented and ambitious and hardworking friends. Mm-hmm. That's like that's all I want to do. I just want to make movies with my buddies that deserve it. And it it's so much fun. It's just it's, it's just like you feel like Santa Claus when you can just hire your friends to do what you know they, they can do incredibly well and, you know, should be being paid a lot of money for. And, and you know, that's what I want to do. I want to make indie movies with all of my talented buddies. And you have no problem if you're in front of the camera as well, I assume. I mean, if they ask you to play a role or as a producer, you, there's a role that you think you would be good for. You would jump in front of the camera too, right? Oh, absolutely. I love acting first and foremost. Okay. Um, now, you there's a lot of stuff. Uh, you Your credentials are huge. Uh, again, IMDb is not the most accurate, but there is a lot of stuff like that's announced uh, that has already come out. You were on this latest season of Creepshow, okay? Yes. Describe that experience. Oh, wow. Okay. So you guys, you're not going to believe me, but like literally that was the most fun I've ever had in my whole life. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just because I was coming out of COVID land and, you know, I hadn't seen humans for a while, but like, okay, they're like, Hey, come to the fitting. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming. And it was 10 minutes from my house and I drive there and I'm looking like shit. I thought I was just going for a fitting. And Greg Nicotero is just like, hey, Hannah, no, come on. I, I want you to get, yeah, come on, let's go talk. We need to talk about, our, you know, what we're doing and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, shit, I wasn't ready to meet Greg Nicotero. You're, you're amazing. And, um, you know, it was just like, oh, humans, humans. And I ran into, like, so many of my friends that, that had read the call sheet. And so they came out to, to meet me. They I somehow knew I was there. And it was just like humans. And it was just like, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. And then, and then they, uh, they just, I mean, okay. So the wardrobe department made all these tailor made outfits just for me. Um, just beautiful, exquisite wardrobe. And then, um, they made all these custom wigs for me and like the, the makeup was just so incredible. And, and it was it's super fun too because like I didn't even have to audition. They just cast me. They were just like, and I was like, well, why why'd you just cast me? And Greg is like, oh, I'm familiar with your work, yeah. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, and I, you know, I was just like, oh shit, that's nuts. And um, and so we did that. And then Greg's like, oh well, you know, this is a small role and you're pretty unrecognizable. So I want to cast you in third season. And I was just like, yeah okay, that'd be great, you know, do it. And, um, and so I, d- I did that too. And it was just, uh, both were just so much fun. And that's how I got the purple hair. Like I trusted the, the, the hair lady because I'd worked with her and she was just so talented. And I was just like, dude, you can do whatever you want in my hair. I don't care. Was that and so f- she did. Oh, sorry. Go on. And so she made it this color and now I'm keeping it forever. I love it. It definitely works. I'll tell you that much. I know, right? That's so cool. I <laughs> love it. Was that the first time you ever met Greg? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Greg Nicotero, you know, big guy uh, uh, in the horror world. You would never met him before. He just came up to you, recognized you, and wanted to put you into Creepshow. I mean, that's pretty damn cool. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know who I am? Are you? For real? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I love your work. I'm like, oh. you know. That's a compliment. Yeah, it, That's it a was compliment. such a, oh my gosh, it was so cool. Now, what would you say was the greatest difference you found between shooting like a found footage storyline like VHS and the traditional shooting of something like Siren? Oh, we lost you. 
Oh shit! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. My B. My B. My B. Where am I? Where am I? Here I am. Where am I? I'm sorry. There you go. I was I was trying to figure out how much battery life I have because my phone just told me it was dying. Um, so the difference between like found footage. It's vast, actually. Um, it, it's basically just like breaking all the rules. You're looking straight into the camera, breaking the fourth wall. Um, you you don't make eye contact with the other actors. You don't have that interaction. You're talking to a camera. It's basically just put all on you. Um, and it's also very difficult to hit your mark. And it's difficult for the actor with the camera on their face to hit their mark as well because they're basically you know, DPing in a way. Yeah. And, um, so that was, that was different. And also I think that breaking the fourth wall, um, has made fans respond to the character in a more intimate way. Mm-hmm. So like, I think because we well, you know how like serial killers will like stalk, um, anchor people because they think they're sending them messages because yeah. they're looking right into their eyes and, and so I, I didn't get any stalkers. Thank it. Well, one, but whatever. And, and um, it not not a really scary one. It was fine. And um, but like people, I think responded to me in a more intimate way. So so I got all this fan mail that would talk about very 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 personal things and um, that were going on in their lives and and it was actually really beautiful. Um, the response I got. And I think it's because I broke the fourth wall and I, I was like, yeah. I like you. And they're like, Hey, I'm that's welcoming. I'm going to respond yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. Now as a, as a producer, as a producer, what do you think about found footage films like VHS and so on? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a cool concept. I really do. Um, do you think it's getting overplayed a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody thinks that, um, it's like, well, it's something that was found back in the 90s with, like, the Blair Witch Project. And then yeah, it was, like, reinvigorated again with Paranormal Activity. Mm-hmm. And now everybody's trying to imitate it. You yeah, know? yeah. It was a really good idea. And, um, you know, I, yeah, I think it might be overplayed a little bit. Unless somebody comes up with a really cool new thing. I mean, I believe, I believe that's possible. Do you think you have any ideas as a writer, maybe, that you might bring, you know, something new to the horror genre? I mean, well, you don't have, I'm not genre, asking you yeah. what they are, but just in general, do you have like some ideas whirling around in your head that something the horror genre has never seen before? Because it's very hard. You're talking about a genre. I mean, that... I'd like to think so, but, you know, I mean, every time I have an idea, somebody else makes it. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Like, like I came up with the idea for Moana and then... I googled it and it was already in production. I'm just like, damn it, that Moana. Sucks. I mean, yeah, yeah, like things like that happens all the time. And it's just like it's we're all in this collective like I don't know, like like the whole world is sort of in tune with one another, and it just feels like as soon as you have an idea, somebody else has already had it, or you know, a bunch of people that actually can make it happen have it, and it's just you know, you just got to go with it. It's almost like you know, like athletes they there's this there's this place where nobody's run faster than this guy in like 30 years right and then as soon as that guy breaks the record other people keep doing it it's just like this collective uh, i don't know web of possibility yeah does that sound really far out no i mean no it makes perfect sense to me it makes perfect sense to me now what is your uh there was criticism uh, for Amateur Hour and Siren that our films, they were too misogynistic. Uh, do you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, n- um, no, I, 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 I disagree with it. I see where the people are coming from. They're coming mm-hmm. from a very, you know, sensitive place. And, and, um, and I respect their opinion, you know, the, the, because it was the male gaze. And mm-hmm. it was a male director, but the the bad I was not my character, the female was not the bad guy. The bad guys were the guys, yeah. and so, um, I mean, I can see, I, I, I get, I get why they say that, and because there was a lot of nudity, and because it was gratuitous, and because you know it was incredibly provocative. But I think that um, 
I think I think if you just like dig a little deeper, you'll realize that they'll realize that it isn't misogynistic. In fact, it's it's the opposite. It's more of a criticism of hyper masculine masculinism and and um you know like what's the word where you're like just like I don't. I forget the word. But, Alpha male, um, maybe? Just dominant? Yeah, that's not the word, but... Yeah, so my character, at the end of the day, is not the bad guy. No. She's not. Even though she rips people to, to shreds, she's the sympathetic one. And if you can understand that and, and realize that we intentionally did that. Mm-hmm. and And, I mean, I don't see how people can watch VHS twice because the actors were so good at their job and so annoying and so horrible that it's just like, uh, yeah, I just don't see how anybody could, could not recognize the fact that it was, it was a nuanced misunderstood monster scenario. When VHS came out, I mean, it's a new concept. These, you know, the first one, people break into a house and there's a TV Mm -hmm. with a old video cassette recorder of course, curiosity kicks in. They start playing the tapes and they start seeing all of these disturbing uh, real footage things that supposedly happened. For back in that time, do you think that was a, a completely brand new concept that VHS brought to the forefront, which attributed to it becoming so popular? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a great idea. It was It was a great idea. It was a great idea. It was very unique. Mm-hmm. If uh, mm-hmm. I mean, and not really copied that much. I mean, the whole found mm-hmm. footage has been copied, mm-hmm. but the way they did it in VHS and how they incorporated the found footage, that was unique. How much do you like putting on like makeup, like uh, for Siren and sitting on the makeup chair and getting all made up for a role? Uh, do you enjoy that, or is, do you consider that just a big pain in your ass? I hate it. Really? Yeah. It, I hate it. What, I can't sit. I can't sit for more than five minutes. I mean, look at me. I'm rocking. Like, I I, I can't sit through a three-hour movie. I can't. Okay. I, yeah, I, I really hate it. Um, so how I long do... would you be in the makeup chair for, like, for the makeup for Siren? How long would you be in the, in the chair for? Well, it was full body makeup for Siren. So they had to paint my entire body and to do the, the blood, that, you know, down the front. And then to do um, when she became the monster, I had to do the prosthetic and um, on my face. And I don't remember. It was like it, it wasn't even just five hours in the chair. It was five hours and then or however many hours. I don't know how I don't remember. It was a long time ago, but that like is, yeah. uh, 2016. Maybe, maybe three and full, you know, with the full teeth and everything. But like, as soon as I would get up, I'd snap off my nails by accident. I'd mess up the feet. I, you know, pull off something by accident, you know, back in the chair. So it was constant, constant, just like touching, 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 touching. And I'm just like, ah. You're like, God, in today's world with all the CGI, why the hell do you have to sit in this makeup chair for that long? (laughs) I mean, it it did look really good, though. It It really did. It really did. In in 2016, you reprised your role as Lily uh, in a full-length film uh, by the name, like we talked about, Siren, which was Mm -hmm. directed by Greg Bishop, uh, Mm -hmm. which follows up more of Lily's backstory was doing yeah. the full length version of Lily story like a no brainer to do, or did you have to get some persuading to go along and do that to get you on board with it? Um, well, like with the, with VHS, we I was I was making a movie with all my friends. And with Siren, I was making a movie with a whole bunch of strangers. Okay. And and it was a feature, so it was a whole month of shooting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, I wanted to do it, but, um, but I, I was also just really terrified that we might screw it up. Okay. Because like people, I mean, and I, I read the script and it was a very good script and, and Ben and Luke who wrote it were really talented. And I'm, I mean, I knew, 
I knew Greg Bishop um, because he was just one of the local guys who's been making movies since the nineties with us. And um, I hadn't worked with him before, but I knew he was talented. And um, yeah, okay, so like a lot of people had, had been getting like tattoos of my face on their bodies, and you know, all these these fans are just so hardcore. And I'm like, what if we disappoint them? And they regret their tattoo. Wow. You I, know? Yeah, that's a lot of responsibility to be putting that's on your shoulders. That's that, a lot of responsibility. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like, what if we fuck it up? What if they, what if they don't like it? What if they hate it? Are they going to get it lasered off? That would be painful. Like, I don't know. I, I There was a lot of things that went through my head um, with that. And I was just like, well, if it's not me, then maybe they won't have to get the tattoo removed and they won't be disappointed because it's an entirely different thing and I was like should I do this and yeah so there was I don't know I I wanted to do it I I really did um yeah, yeah. I think because it's mine it sounds you know? like you were just putting a little bit too much pressure on yourself uh in regards to what other people were going to put on their body and whether they're going to regret it on whether or not they like the movie or not uh so yeah I guess so I mean, glad that it came out the way that it uh, it came out. Uh, it sounds like you really enjoy making films, whether it's producing or co-acting with with your closest friends. Uh, uh, now, when it comes to doing movies with people you've never worked with before, are you the kind of person who's like when you come on the set and you don't really know that many people, you're like the reserve type? Or you seem like really outgoing. You would come up to somebody and, you know, introduce yourself or they would come up to you. How do you, if you were to step outside yourself and analyze how you work, obviously you're going to treat people that you know differently than people that you're meeting for the first time. But how would you describe yourself if you're coming onto the set with people that you have never worked with before? Well, there's always that anticipa anticipation and anxiety, you know, just like, oh, are we going to jive? You know, especially if you have to have like some sort of intimacy, like immediately, yeah. um, whether it be a friendship or, you know, just straight up making out with somebody after knowing them for five minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. OK, so I'm not the sort of actor who stays in their trailer. Um you know, I, 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 I like to be in it. I got a little FOMO, like I want to be a part of everything. And, um, and it's fun being on set is fun. It, you know, you just, you want to be in it. You don't want to be annoying. You don't want to get in anybody's way, but yeah, I try to be as, um, well, okay. So actors are fun. They're gregarious. You, you know, actors as actors that, you want to play with them. They want to play with you. They're playful yeah, people. Because, you know. I mean, yeah. A lot of people don't understand. Just because you guys are in front of a camera, you're regular people. I mean, it's, yeah. It's no different. It's no different than any other work environment, really. Uh, really, yeah. Looking back, yeah. what would you say? Uh, you said Creep Show was the funnest experience. So it is that funnest, is yeah. that absolutely true? Out of all the movies and stuff that you've made, Creep Show is like number one on the fun list for you? Okay, so there's there's two others that are also super fun. So um I did uh I did the show Toast of London with with Matt Barry and Alan Ford and uh, Robert Bathurst and um that was also super fun. Those guys are cool. And um, and I did this pilot called Pepper's Place where I got to work with a whole bunch of puppets and dancers and stuff. And it, it didn't take off, but it was so cool. And I played Pepper and I got basically, okay, well, this this uh, director, writer wrote it for me based on my personality. So I, I didn't actually have to do a whole lot of acting. It was just me showing up and hanging out with wonderful artists and stuff. And so those, those are my three, those are my three favorites by far. Yeah. What's what, what looking, what is your favorite uh, location that you've ever shot in? Besides Atlanta, because I, you know, Atlanta is sort of like your hometown. My favorite location. Have you done a lot of shooting outside the United States? Yeah, I have. I've shot in Canada multiple times. I've shot in um, Romania. I've shot in England. I've shot in 
Kuwait I've shot in um yeah oh, lots of so, different places so you're you are definitely quite the world traveler um now what do you think I, I bring this question up to a lot of my uh guests on how you know if you go back to the 90s 80s movies were either shot in LA or New York okay mm -hmm. and then you had the ones in Canada Vancouver how do you feel mm -hmm. about Atlanta being such a huge spot for film and television making right now well, I think it, I think it's fantastic it's actually what I wanted to do um, but I thought I had I, I thought I had to to bring it you know and and then um, what was it Shay Shay Griffith she she and the, a whole bunch of other like casting directors and producers and things like actually encouraged the tax incentive and brought all all this production to the city and that's what I wanted in the first place because I, I felt like you know I've been working here for a really long time and and I want more more content to be created mm -hmm. by these incredibly talented people that I know live here and, and actors and everything um, I think that well okay I don't think Atlanta is a particularly beautiful city but there's a lot of really beautiful uh, like towns and architecture and you can always build things in studios and you can shoot in Savannah, which is gorgeous. And, you know, I just think that Georgia has a whole lot to offer in so many ways. And I'm just really pleased that a, a lot of my friends are, are able to live and, and myself live near my family mm -hmm. and work here. Like that was the ultimate goal. And it just happened way sooner than I thought it was going to, which is, which is amazing. It is amazing. I was born mm -hmm. and raised in New York City for okay. the first 23 years of my life. So uh, growing up, uh, every time I went out, Manhattan, mm -hmm. I would, you would pass by, uh, something was filming. Uh, yeah. Not only that, you go to Greenwich Village, where NYU is, you have all the film students yeah. uh, doing all their filming. So me growing up with filming going on all around you was no big deal. And to give you an example, when I was going to junior high school, we would pass the set of Coming to America with Eddie Murphy every day. Oh, how yeah. neat. Yeah. <laughs> it was just on the normal you know, bus ride back and forth from my junior high school middle yeah. school in, in, in suburbia it's middle school in the city we call it junior high school but anyway uh yeah. it's just not that unusual now uh i guess it's because it's so damn expensive unless you're shooting on a lot in los angeles you really any movies or tv shows that supposedly take place in new york city they're not shot in new york city very few are actually shot in new york city and they shoot it in some other city and they make New York look like wherever they are. Uh, how does, I mean, how do you feel about that as opposed to actually shooting in at the actual location like New York? Because you've lived in New York. I love New York, but it's too expensive. It's too big of a pain in the ass. You know, you, you can't. You can't clear out a lot. People are just going to no. be like, hey, I'm walking here. Let me, you know. Well, they get annoyed it, it, whenever the president comes to town because of yeah, traffic. Yeah, like get out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's too it's too hard, and and um, it would shut down. Just it would just be too big of a pain in the ass. Um, and you know, I mean, I don't think the city really needs the influx of money either. So mm. I'm fine with them shooting New York City outside of New York City. I think it'd be more convenient for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and nobody nobody will get pissed off. Like um. This TV show that I shot in Romania, it was based in Chicago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look, I mean, the city looks nothing like Ch well, Bucharest or, that yeah, was Bucharest, yeah. Um, looks nothing like Chicago. So, so they had to green so screen. So why all the Romania? Windows. Why not like pick, uh, you know, I don't North know. Carolina? I don't know. I think it was, it was super cheap back then. This is, this was like at least 12, well, 11 years ago or something. But yeah, they just have great, um, they just have a lot of r really good filmmakers out there and it's just super cheap. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it all the, just, do it, the dollar went a long way back then. I don't know if it's, if it still does, but yeah. so now that we're sort of starting to see the light at the end of the COVID tunnel, at least here in the United States, uh, hopefully yeah. we're starting to see the light. Do you think Hollywood has forever been changed? 
Oh, absolutely. I think we've all forever been changed until until everybody's dead and nobody remembers this. I yeah. think we're forever changed. I know I am. As far as movie releases go, uh, you know, streaming at home, it was going to happen. Uh, I mean, you knew it, yeah, was, it was going that direction. COVID just really sped up the timeline. Yeah. I want your opinion as a producer, okay? You have all these different studios mm -hmm. and they're all and distributors and they're coming up with their own streaming services. I predicted that you're going to see a lot of mergers coming up because I agree. Yeah. Yeah, you you can't expect the average viewer to subscribe to 20 different services. Okay, so first of all, it's analysis paralysis with just one server. Yeah. But you got like five and you're just like Fuck it. I'm, I'm not even going to watch TV. I'm exactly. just going to go barbecue. Like, it's it's just too much content. It's just like, you know, back in the day, we went to Blockbuster. There was like five new releases. Mm -hmm. And you and had a could, finite shelf of movies. And then it was easy to pick and you were excited about it and you yeah. got it home and, and you watched it and you appreciated the fuck out of it. And now it's just like, oh, nah, I'm going to watch something else. Yeah. I mean, I've five got... Minutes. I've got all these different streaming services when at the end of the day, just before I go to bed and I actually want to watch a movie, I got to run a freaking an analysis on, do I want to watch this, this, this? I mean, I, I don't know. Too much. It is too it's much. It's too much. Yeah. And I agree with you. And I think that, I think you're right. I think that there's going to be some sort of mergers and, and collaborations and maybe like people, well, like Shudder, for example, you know, you know, if you want to watch something horror, you go there. Exactly. So there's that. I mean, maybe maybe it, that's the way to go with it. Um, but yeah, it's just, I agree. It's just too much. And so I just, honestly, I don't really watch a whole lot of TV and movies anymore. I just can't pick. And I'll just turn them off and then I won't give them a chance. And it's just, Do you yeah. enjoy going to the theater? Uh, movie theater. I, I love going to the theater. So yeah, me too. And I hope COVID... Uh, I mean, it's going to impact some of the smaller movie theaters it already has. Mm -hmm. But That's I do shame. hope, uh, not like a year from now, movie theaters return to some kind of normalcy. I really do, because it'd be a shame. I do too. There is a difference. It's more convenient to watch a movie at home, obviously. But there's something about going to the movies that it's more than just about the movie. It's an event. Oh, yeah. It's an event. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You get the popcorn. You get all your buddies together. You all go. You, you know, you talk about it afterward. It's a thing. Absolutely. It's, yeah. I love it. I love it. And I miss it so much. And, and I have um, friends in Atlanta, uh, Chris Escobar. He owns the, um, the Plaza Theater, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous old theater in Atlanta. And, you know, he's been doing everything, like doing pop-ups, like, you know, drive-ins, um, to, to keep it alive, like really hustling. Yeah. And, um, and you know, kudos to him. It, it, yeah, I just, it would be terrible. It would be terrible if, if these, oh, shit. You lost me again. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's because my phone's about to die. All but, right. you know, I, I think he's a survivor, and I think it's he's going to get through it. And I, I sincerely hope all these other theaters do as well, because it's a it's a part of Americana. It's a part of the experience. Yeah. You need to you need to be able to go to the movies. Exactly. exactly. We're almost out of time anyway. I know your phone's about to die. I just want to <laughs> share with you, our viewers. Oh, my God. I can see some of the comments. Summer Springer says, Hannah has big, beautiful eyes. Thank you, Summer. Yeah, you're getting a whole bunch of compliments, and maybe when you yeah. watch this on replay, you'll see some of those comments. <laughs> Hannah, thank you so much. It was oh a, a pleasure meeting you in person in North Carolina. I hope to see you again in future cons, uh, whether it's later this year or other further down the line. And I want to talk to you again and keep in touch because this has been yeah. a fascinating hour, and it just flew by. Thank you again so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. And it's been an hour. Wow, it really did fly by. It yeah. Has. It is. Thank it you. has been an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. And yeah, I, I, yeah, holler at me whenever you want to do an interview. We'll do it. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, till tomorrow, on behalf of Hannah and myself, stay safe and always stay walking. Till tomorrow. Good night. All right.